a long, long time ago in a far, far away place called Blackistan. There were wars and these conflicts were called the Blackistan Wars. And throughout these wars, there arose a man of royal lineage and his name was Benjamin D'Souza. He brought forth a sword, a sword that will shine light in darkness, free the captive minds, and bring truth and justice. His eyes glimmered like ember. His skin was like fine burnished steel. And as he walked behind him, he left a glistening wake. This is the story of Benjamin D'Souza, the prince and the warlord. To both of y'all, no disrespect there. I just, I was trying to get the conversation under control. Yeah, no, and it, and it, and it, and it broke my heart to mute two people that I've, you know, been listening to for years and respect you brothers. I was just trying to get it under control. But uh, you, you know, you have both of us on was to be expected, but I'm gonna address Benjamin and I'm boss back off because actually I was supposed to be gone a long time ago, but we are doing quarantine, so it ain't that big a deal. But okay, well, give me that on, first question yes. again, Benjamin. You yeah, said yeah, yeah, something yeah. about the side, dude. What yeah, was the yeah, first yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna let me put it in the context for you again. Earlier, Obsidian talked about the macro results of this uh side bitch culture, for lack of a better term, and okay. you said that there weren't any fallout. Could you please explain that? No, 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 I did not say that. Not on a macro level. No, I didn't say that. I was speak. I said I made it clear. I was speaking for myself because I felt like he was saying that Alan, you've destroyed marriages and relationships by being a side dude. I said, speaking for myself, I said I have no knowledge of that happening. Okay, so, so I was speaking right, so, for myself. I wasn't speaking for so, all side dudes in the world. No. Brother Allen, brother Allen, there are known knowns and there are known unknowns. Just because you didn't, you had no knowledge of a fallout, just because a tree falls in the forest and you don't hear it, doesn't mean that tree didn't fall. You get what I'm saying? But so, I never had any woman come back to me and say, hey, Alan, because of me and you mess around, my marriage is now over or my relationship with my boyfriend is now over or whatever else. Now again, it's, it's, it's not about chance her. that Brother that Alan. happened and they didn't tell me, so be it. I'm only going by what I know, but I don't know of any woman that Brother I had Alan. sex with that was married, engaged, be married, or was in a relationship that my interactions with the woman directly result to the dis dissolution of that relationship or marriage. Brother Allen, we we can put pieces together and deduce that when you enter. Okay, bro, what's the next question? What's your what's your next question? <laughs> an outside penis into an equation that there's going to be some sort of fallout regardless. Okay, what's your next question? Okay, now could you give me three bad results of a side bitch culture, if you could please? A side bitch culture, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, side dude, side bitch, same thing. I, I'm not in favor of either one of them. Well, could you give me three bad results from that particular um, cultural oh, you practice? Can, you, uh, the, the easiest would be if a woman's cheating on her husband and mm -hmm. she ends up getting pregnant by her side dude or okay. a man is cheating on his wife and he ends up getting another woman pregnant okay so pregnant two times on both sides but i'm talking about the dude being the adulterer what, what are you, what are you, what are you I'm, talking I'm, about I'm, ta I'm, I'm talking about an outside dude interjecting himself into someone else's marriage or relationship well, well, see, first of all you got to understand this is where a lot of guys have to me a misconception. Sir, a lot sir, of guys assume that when a woman I, has a side dude, on that the side dude yeah, was an aggressor. Yeah. And that's not always the case. Because a lot of the women that I fucked who were married, engaged to be married, or had a boyfriend, they threw the pussy at me. I didn't aggressively okay. pursue them. Be that as it may, we're still on one. If the chick gets pregnant by the outside dude, would okay. you please give me number two and number three, sir? Um, just a, 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 You create a distrust if, if, if the shit comes out. I mean, cheating is wrong because you you you're presenting a false reality to your partner. Okay, so is, is there any um, behavioral traits that the woman who's cheating on her husband can develop that she can bring back that could be deleterious to her relationship with her husband? So, if I'm the side dude, 
and I'm messing around with a married woman, you asking me, is there traits she can develop that mm -hmm. would be detrimental to her marriage? Yes. No, I'm, of course, I'm probably sure as possible. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But most women are so good at, at discreetly keeping their extramarital affairs, extra relationship, tryst, uh, discreet, that it never comes up. Unless it turns into a full blown affair, that's when it's usually going to have the potential to be a home record situation. Is if it goes from say, see, I did a Patreon exclusive where I talked about with my guy, brother ARC, brother ARC. If, if I could just interject real quick, you okay, said that one of the uh, telltale signs that a woman, your woman, may be cheating on you is that when you're ready to have sex with her, she may uh, she has a head to have a yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if yeah. she's not, if she's gratifying if she's sexually gratifying the outside dude but she's okay. not gratif she's not sexually gratifying her husband uh -huh. wouldn't you think that that would bring some uh contention within that household wouldn't you think that would bring some disruption in that household would you say that are you insulting my intelligence right now? Why, you, why would you I, ask a question like sir, that? Sir, I'm asking you a simple question. I'm not. Yeah, this, the, the question your is intelligence is not intelligence. Of course, of course, I think it's a detrimental thing. What the fuck you want me to say? It's a great so, thing for a woman to cheat. With that said, sir, Obsidian's assertion earlier that there is some fallout from the side dude, side piece culture. You said there weren't. I did not that say you right? put words in my okay. mouth. I never said on a macro level that there weren't detriments to it. I said that I never directly, to my knowledge, directly caused a marriage to end in divorce. That's what I said. Don't put words in my mouth, brother. Do you do you rest your case, um, attorney? No, he still he still he still hasn't given me the thirty. You asked me. I thought you were going to ask me some intelligent questions, man. These are all dumb, fucking, stupid questions. Now man. you're insulting my intelligence. You got damn right, him. You asked me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you think if a woman cheats on her husband that it can be a bad thing in the relationship? Well, I gotta walk you through this. This, this is this is A B C. Because if I if I let you get off the trail, we'll be we'll be talking about back in '87. I used to have a, a two foot long jerry curl. I had the thriller jacket on, man. I was playing the moves back up in in Gary and Chicago. So I gotta keep you on track. Are you get to talking about back in your heyday, back when you nigga? Had a I did what I did. Jerry curl. I did a, what a, I did. And, and a thriller jacket. And nobody could take that away. I don't want to hear about your Jerry curl and your thriller jacket, me, nigga. I did what I did. I fucked other motherfuckers. I don't want to hear about yeah, your soul it. glow and your thriller jacket. What motherfucker? I don't want to hear about that shit. You ain't gonna so back to the later at hand. Come on, baby. Try to perfection talk to is perfection, so I'm gonna let you <laughs> understand. Come ask questions with your blank panther avatar, motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> back, <laughs> back to the late oh, hand. Face, I don't know perfection is perfection, so I'm gonna let you understand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we got, we got, we got, we got one. Boy, you, you used to talk to the stupid motherfuckers. That's what your problem sir, is, sir. That, that, Sir, I'm trying to ask you a simple question. We go, we got, got, got veins popping out your forehead and shit. You ask me these dumb veins popping out your forehead. Questions and shit. Twelfth grade level, okay. Yeah, All right. Grade level now, questions, now, 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 now the three. You got bad one more results. question, then. Now the three bad results from a side dude culture. You said pregnancy, distrust. Because you give me the third, if you could, please, sir. Give <laughs> you, I mean, I'm tired. Of uh, yeah. Hey, Bernard, All right, we go. thank you for having me on, brother. Hey, I'm buddy. out. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, go tuck your hey, tail. I'd like to thank everybody. This was my best show today. <laughs> A lot yeah, of, yeah. Hold on. You lot of him, beans and turns. Go, and, uh, you let him go. He got to talk yeah. about back in the 80s, back when he used to drive a 1974 Cadillac with a three-foot Jerry Curl in and how he had the coldest thriller jacket in in Gary, Indiana. I don't want to hear that shit. Stay to the top. <laughs> All, right, we good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. We out. Hey, thanks, everybody with the Cash App and Scott Haywood for becoming a Patreon. I appreciate all that. I'm, more you can go check out that Patreon and hit the Cash App on the way out the door. It's Benjamin D'Souza here. The Prince. Back with another classic. And yeah, my production of my videos 
have slowed down a little bit. I got a couple irons in the fire that's been um, taking up a much, bunch of my time and a lot of space in my mind. So, you know, the production of my videos have, have slowed down or whatever. But um, God willing, within, a, within the next month or so, I got a big announcement that I might make. But be that as it may. I would like to talk about this recent exchange that I had with none other than Alan Roger Curry. This isn't a this isn't a diss record towards the man, you know. I'm like I've said in the past, when I speak on certain individuals, I'm using said individual as an avatar to uh, speak to a greater issue. And the clip that you heard was um, an exchange that we had on Brother Bernard Riley's channel. I'll leave the link in the description. It was like a seven hour, um, literally de facto marathon or whatever. And I didn't, I, I came in late. I came in like halfway through. But anyway, I was trying to ask him about the... Uh, The negative effects of a side dude culture or a side bitch culture, you know, whatever, however you want to say it, you know. And I was kind of disappointed in the exchange that I had with Mr. Curry because I've spoken with him in the past before and it didn't get, you know, the waters didn't get muddy like that. I didn't muddy the waters, as you can clearly see in the tape. I wasn't, you know, I do have the propensity to <laughs> get the flipping tables and, and motherfucking coming off the top rope with flying elbows on niggas and shit. But as you can clearly see, I wasn't the culprit in that situation for the table getting flipped. So I was kind of disappointed because the exchange that me and Alan Roger Curry had in the past didn't transpire like that. But I kind of knew after, you know, him and I's exchange had wrapped up, I kind of knew why he did it. But, you know, I won't speculate on that too much. But um, I asked him to give me three examples of... Um, the negative effects, three negative effects that could happen with um, side peace culture. And, you know, he started going off and insulting my intelligence, talking about, these are stupid questions, these are... Granted, this is the same man who likes to say, explain it to me like I'm a third grader. Explain it to me like I'm a third grader. Okay, well, I'll ask you third grade questions, so... I can give you a third grade explanation. <laughs> you know? So it's like, all right, come on, dude. You you, you want motherfuckers to explain the shit to you on a rudimentary level, and then when motherfuckers start breaking shit down on a rudimentary level, now, now you want, you know, upper crust, high level scholarly breakdown on scholarly questions on the shit man come on man. you, you flip flopping bro you flip flopping man that, that nigga trying to you know that's 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 one thing i don't like man i don't like when another grown man tries to talk to a another grown man like a hoe you know what i'm saying like that's that's some jive ass talk that's some jive ass turkey talk that you give one of your hoes you know what i'm saying that's how you talk to your girlfriend. When your girlfriend asks you where you been and shit, and you know you been out catting, catting about, doing some shit that you, you ain't had no business into, and she asks you a question, and then you just want to flip the chair. Bitch, why you always ask me? <laughs> that's, some shit, that's some shit you do to a hoe, bro. You talk to a hoe like that, man. You'll talk to another grown man like that, bro. I lost some, you know, you lost some respect points for me, man. If that means anything to you, Mr. Curry, if you listening, man, you lost some, man. Yeah, shit cold fucked me up. I was like, wow, okay, all right. Well, you know, 
the conversation got blew up on said uh, on Bernard Riley's panel and shit. But you know, it's all good because I have my own platform. Where I can come back to my own platform and you know give the uh, in depth analysis on the whole uh, conversation the way I want to, uninterrupted, no jive ass turkey talk over here. You know. But I basically asked the man to give me three bad results from a side chick culture, a side dude culture. And I did that because of an earlier exchange in said podcast that he had with um, uh, Obsidian, right? Obsidian had made the assertion that um, side dude culture is a key component to the breakdown of the black community. You know, he says, you know, select select fuck boys are responsible. They are chief responsible for this uh, for this whole f- fuck tard of a situation that we're in today. And Alan Roger Curry if you go back and listen to the tape, when Obsidian made that assertion, Alan Roger Curry rose, you know, gave an objection to that. So that's why I kept asking him that. And then by the time I got got around to asking him about it, he kind of wiggled and kind of wanted to play semantics. And then talking about, well, don't put words in my mouth. Well, nigga, you know what the fuck you said. You know exactly what the fuck you said. When Obsidian says select fuckboys are fucking up the black community because of their fuckboyism, you rose some of you said nope, nope, nope. You objected to that. Please explain why you have objections to that, sir. But anyway, these are when I asked him the question and I asked him, these are the reasons that he gave me. And we're gonna go through this point by point. And it's the reason why I asked motherfuckers to give me um, three examples. Of whatever I'm asking them to, you know, to give me because I I do this shit like a, um, like a table, you know. If you ever went to college or, or did any, um, you know, write took any writing classes, you'll know that you'll write a greater topic down and you'll give it a Roman numeral one, and then you'll attribute, you know, several attributes to that greater topic. By labeling those as A, B, and C, then you go to Roman numeral number two, which is the next topic, and then you know you break it down point by point. You know what I'm saying? So that's essentially what I do when I ask motherfuckers to give me three examples. Okay, we're gonna start it from the top of what he said. Um, problem number one, bad result number one is a uh, pregnancy. You know, you got. Boyfriend and girlfriend who've been rocking hard body for some time or husband and wife. Outside dude interjects his penis into that equation and a baby comes about. Well, that pregnancy right there, sir, fucks up bloodlines. That makes shit real murky. You know what I'm saying? That makes shit real murky. Because I, I give you I give you a real life example. I got an uncle. Not gonna say his name, but um, as long as I've been alive, man, shit, as long as I can remember, I'm talking about shit, late 80s. This man been married to one woman. They got two kids, two daughters, older daughter, younger daughter. I just found out maybe a year or so ago that the youngest daughter. Whom I thought was my blood cousin my entire life. Come to find out, she is a product of an outside fuck dude, fuck boy, interjecting his penis in the marriage of my uncle and his wife. And a love child came about. And now I'm now I'm going back and thinking back in my mind at all the family gatherings when said um, auntie would show up to these family gatherings, 
She would show up briefly, but when she would come, she'd have a, a, a look of guilt and apprehension on her face. Like, she wouldn't talk too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because she knew that everybody knew, yeah, bitch, that, that second child right there, that ain't my, that ain't my brother's uh, daughter. Or that second child right there, that ain't my son's daughter. Or that ain't, you know what I mean? Never knew that shit, man. That divides households right there. When, when you come into a situation and a woman gets pregnant by another dude, that fucks up the bloodline. Because now the man who's responsible for gathering up resources and gra- gathering up and building an estate to pass down to said children. Now he has to neglect the sibling of his child and solely focus on passing down said estate to the child that he has blood ties to. But even in doing so, that's still your son or your daughter's brother or sister. So they still going to reap some sort of benefits and whatnot. So yeah, that's in the second reason that he gave me was um, distrust. Distrust. I mean, obviously, yeah, that's obvious. But you know, it is what it is. Sometimes the best answer is the obvious answer. Obviously, man, you know, if I can't trust you, ain't shit we can do. Ain't shit I can do with you. To be perfectly honest with you You know Shit my baby mama to this day On my On my tip On the tip of my lowly like a motherfucker Want want a nigga back But I can't trust her Because of past uh, Indiscretions on her part I can't trust her man Cause I, I roll with the I roll with the uh with the old saying, man, when you know better, you do better. And now that you you motherfucking know better, if you if you lie, you steal. If you steal, you cheat. And if you cheat, you kill. So, bitch, you cheat on me. If you, if you cheat me, bitch, uh, it ain't far fetched for me to to conclude that you might try to kill me. <laughs> and if you think I'm gonna lay my head. Up under the same roof as you And eat your food Shit Shit And insert my penis in you Shit You got me fucked up Hell no Hell no Now I'm not tripping Off of um You know, I'm basically not tripping off of a bitch, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm just not, you know. Like, if if I'm with a chick and and she she decides to creep on me and I catch her, hey, set la vie, you know. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Let's, Let's part ways. That's nothing to me. My main focus is is when other uh, variables are a part of that equation, i.e. children. That's my main problem. And he didn't give me a third reason, but I'll go ahead and give that third reason right now the third reason for um, a bad result of a um, side dude culture is and it's this is obvious but but Follow my logic real quick. It's the breakdown of the family. 
And motherfuckers don't actually think about this. But when you're talking about the breakdown of the family, let, let's examine what that means. You got a couple, right? Man, woman. They've been rocking hard body for quite some time. They got a son together, right? The woman, for whatever reason, decides to um, bring another dick into the equation. The man says, okay, her man or her husband or whatever says, okay, I'm out of here. So he breaks up with them. Now they're doing the co-parenting baby mama, baby daddy thing, right? She's putting him on child support. She got him on child support. Now he has to um, go far and wide to seek gainful employment that uh, put him in a position to where he can at least sustain some modicum of a, of a decent lifestyle. So let's say he's in Kansas City, but the nearest job that he can get that pays well enough to support his lifestyle and keep the child support off his back is all the way in St. Louis. So now he has to live, now he has to relocate three hours away. And now he only gets to see his son, what, a week out of every month or so? Or, or whatever. A week after every other month and shit. Now he, as a father figure, is not there in the house on the daily with his son. But guess what his son sees on a daily basis? You guessed it. His son sees the, the neighborhood dope boys, the neighborhood gang members, the the neighborhood whatever, whatever scoundrel you want to think of. And they become a father figure to him. So now the son, without his father being in a home on a daily basis, being a guiding light for him, now gravitates towards the streets. Now gravitates towards a lifestyle that will be deleterious for the overall surrounding community. Now said son gets caught up in a life of crime. Maybe his crime affects other families in a negative way. And ultimately the son either dies or goes to jail. And basically becomes a statistic. Do you see when we start peeling back the layers on the on the consequences of these actions, where this shit leads? I surmise that fuckboy ism. Side bitch ism, side piece culture, finesse slash finesse culture has a direct result to every negative metric that plagues the black community today. And I heard a live stream recently by this uh, female YouTuber. I'm not gonna say her name, but uh, she's been involved in uh, the, one of these latest scandals in these black YouTube streets. And I was listening to the uh, the infamous live stream that all this shit transpired on. And at the culmination of the live stream, Oh, well, not, not, well, during her dialogue, I want to say she made some comments referencing towards me because I tried to hop on that panel, but she blocked me. And she said, oh, you niggas want to come up on here on YouTube and, and boohoo about these black women because she, you know, she went and got her some good dick. I mean, my dick ain't chopped liver, for one. <laughs> And for two, you're not even looking at the bigger picture. So what we have here is 
a male YouTuber defending his right to uh, be a philanderer and a home wrecker. And we have a female YouTuber that's defending women who engage in destructive behavior like that. And to be honest with you, the only people who really suffer are the children. You know? And I mean, to the women out there, you can sit up here all day and and brainwash the children and tell them, yo daddy left us, yo daddy abandoned us. You can tell them that shit all you want. You can tell them that, that they daddy ain't shit and that they daddy abandoned them or whatever. But it still doesn't change the fact that now you are in a single mother situation. Talking cold cash shit about the man whom you ran off because of your bad behavior and the bad decisions and choices that you made is not going to put clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, a roof over their head, and food in their stomach. And when she said that, when the female YouTuber said that, you know, because she was basically, basically what she was saying was, yeah, you know, this particular guy, she didn't say my name, but I'm pretty sure she was talking about me. You know, he wants to get on YouTube and cry about his girl cheated on him because, you know, she found her some good dick and, and the only reason that he caught her is because she went back to go get seconds and thirds. Okay, well... Who's losing in this? Not me. I'm a grown man. You know what I mean? I've been to hell and back. I've, I've faced down death several times in my life. I'm going to be all right. I've made it through the gauntlet of, of childhood and raised up to adulthood. Now it's the child, my child. has to grow up in a dynamic of a single mother household. It's the children that suffer, you know. And then during the exchange that ARC and I had, he said, well, I, you know, I never had a woman come back to me and say, you know, blase, whoop, 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 whoop. Nigga, just because a tree in the forest falls and you didn't hear it, doesn't mean it didn't make a sound. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. Just because they never came back and told you, yeah, Alan, you left a pair of your drawers over here, and he found them, and he divorced me, and now I'm a single mother in my... (laughs) You know, divorcee, single mother, in my early 30s. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, even though she didn't come back and tell you what the fuck happened. Don't mean the shit didn't happen. And guess who gets blamed? Through all of this, guess who gets blamed? That's right. That's right. The boyfriend or the husband. He gets blamed. He gets blamed if if his if his girl or if his wife cheats on him. Oh nigga, your swag juice wasn't over nine thousand. You know, you didn't you didn't dime out your, your woman enough. You didn't have your, your seduction game on, on fleet. And then, if said boyfriend or husband 
catches his girlfriend or his wife and then decides to leave her, then he gets accused of abandonment. It's a lose-lose situation. That's why I spoke about in my classic, my classic video, the top five defects of black men. That's why one of them, one of those defects are um, black men are afraid of being the bad guy. Because for so long, we've, we've had our arm twisted to where we say, you know what, I don't want to get accused for, for uh, abandoning my wife. Or, you know, I don't want to get accused of, you know, not, not holding it down in the bedroom, you know. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stay and, and, you know, try to put on a strong face. No, nigga, fuck that. I'm gonna be the bad guy. And I think that's one of the reasons, that's, I think that's one of the uh, things that my uncle suffered from. Because he know good and goddamn well that once his wife cheated on him and brought in an outside baby by another man, he should have left her ass. But he tried to save face. He tried to save face. Try to put on a brave face, I mean. Shit's crazy, bro. Shit is crazy. Only, only in the black community, man. Only in the black community. Where the swindled gets blamed for getting swindled. Just like that chick in that live stream said, you see a sucker, lick him. Okay. Okay. As soon as you do say, you know what, let me, let me cash out my chips. I'm, I'm done playing. And then he up and bounces. Oh, abandonment, abandonment, abandonment. All right, so let me see. Let me see. If I stay, I'm a cuck. But if I leave, I abandon my family. And or I couldn't dime out my girlfriend or dime out my wife enough. <laughs> Nigga, it's none of your business to come and interject your penis into my situation, brother. Regardless if I choose to or choose not to dime out my girl or dime out my wife. Nigga, it ain't none of your business to meddle in my motherfucking affairs anyway. Regardless, nigga. Regardless, if, if my dime game is, is a level one. <laughs> and, your, and your dime game is over 9,000. Regardless of that, nigga, you ain't got no motherfucking business interjecting yourself into my situation, period. And ARC, if I can just be, if I can just be real with you, bitches talk, man. And you know why? You say, well, so you know, some married women, you know, they uh, they threw themselves at me. You know why that was, brother? And I'm, I'm just, you know, put my tin foil hat on for a second. Just use my imagination. Just walk with me for a second. It's because word got around. If there was a particular relatively handsome light skinned fella gallivanting around the area who uh, didn't mind playing the side bitch role to a married woman. 
and he'll play his part. You know, scale the you know he'll 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 scale the motherfucking building and shit, scale the walls and shit, parachute in on the roof and shit. Come in and do what they do. Come in and do what he's doing and be out like a thief in the night. So they use you because you was you was a safe bet. You had already been verified by other women. Then not only your your, your sexual proclivities might have been, you know, up to their standards and whatever. But that, you know, you played your role as well. I've said this before in a prior video called a sexual mirage. Women, infl they use our own egos against us. They inflated your head so much had you thinking that you had to go play the dickhead so much. That you thinking that, oh man, all these bitches is coming after me because of my sex game and my seduction game and my this and my that game. No, nigga. No. They use you because you was a safe rube. You was a, you was a safe bet, man. You had already been pre-qualified. Motherfuckers already knew that you would play a, your, your part as a side bitch. You play, you'd be a good little boy. So they already put their stamp on you, man. And in the and in the end, what did you gain, bro? What did you gain? I mean, for all of my sexual exploits throughout my life, you know what I gained about that shit, man? I gained one daughter and just a bunch of vague, cloudy memories, <laughs> and a, and a few vivid ones. <laughs> That's it, man. So, I mean, I, I think we all need to have a come-to-Jesus moment, men and women alike. You know, we need to have a come-to-Jesus moment and say, hey, you know, for the females, no, it's not about does getting a quote-unquote good dick on the side, is that really worth fucking up your whole family? And for the fellas who want to play that, that side bitch role and shit, is being able to say, well, nigga, I fucked your bitch. Is that really worth it? Is that really worth fucking up a family and possibly adding to the negative statistics that plague the black community? Is it worth it? These are just questions. These are just questions. Yeah, man, that's all I got. Get up on that.